Hello everyone, this is Zook, and today I'm going to be drawing a grunt from the game Amnesia The Dark Descent. I'm currently in the middle of playing this game, as you probably well know, since I uh, post playthroughs on my channel. And I'm very much enjoying it. So that is the main reason for which I decided to create sort of a tribute to the game by, uh, by drawing this character. More so than uh, regarding how fascinating I find the character myself, because to be quite honest, it's not the most fascinating nor the most famous character out there. But it's it's the main monster in in the game, so yeah, it made sense to to draw it at some point. Plus, a few people have suggested it, the ones that are playing Amnesia and and like it. So, if you're looking for a good quality horror game, I definitely recommend Amnesia. It will make you shit your pants. I mean, I'm usually don't I usually don't get scared. I'm not scared by many things, especially not games. But this one is is something else. And that's because the main focus in the game is not monster combat or fighting or anything. It's just the atmosphere. The atmosphere is so freaking creepy. And a big part of that is due to the music that they use. Like the music is really high quality and I really enjoy it. It's very, very creepy and very dark. Perfect for the game. Perfect for the, the surroundings and atmosphere. <clears throat> what I would have liked to see in the game would have been a bit more variety when it comes to monster design or character design. But I'm very much aware that this is still an indie game, so it takes a lot of resources to to create characters more so than environments, because you got the whole uh, animation issue and uh, from concept to 3D rendering and all that. Plus, you know, if you want to go with different AIs, there's also a lot of programming going into that. So I totally get why frictional games didn't have the particular resources to create a, a larger variety of monsters. But still, it would have been cool. But I, I'm not complaining. The game is great, just as it is. And I'm fine with uh, the amount of monsters that I have chasing me every time I turn a corner. So it's fine. I don't want more of them. The levels, they're exciting enough, in my opinion. Now, let's talk a bit about the character. Uh, I'm going to try to not spoil the story as much as I can. But, of course, there are certain things that I have to mention about this guy. Because they're sort of essential. Yeah, you know, like how it was created and everything. So it goes something like this. The grunt is part of a bigger category, which includes grunts and brutes. They're both basically mindless monsters that just walk around the castle. The Brennenberg, Brennenberg castle, that is. So the gatherers are, are like servants of Alexander, which is the villain in the game. So sorry for any future spoilers, but I have to talk about the character, else nobody knows what the hell that is that I'm drawing. So... It goes something like this. Alexander poisoned the poisoned like people with wine and the people exploded and then Alexander used pieces of metal and uh, various other materials to ho hold their flesh and bones together and they he augmented them with uh, various spikes and shards of metal etc to turn them into like mindless killing machines pretty much. Also the gatherers are referenced at a point in the game uh, regarding soldiers that got lost in the forest uh, during the Thirty Years' War and that were cursed to roam around. And uh, they were also poisoned by drinking the uh, spiced wine and turned into these zombies and they were used as uh, Alexander's way to get l like people for his experiments. He used the gatherers to... That's why they call the gatherers because that's what they do. They gather people. So they kidnap people and take them back to the castle so Alexander can uh, conduct his evil experiments on them. And that's about it for the story. Um, there's really not much else to say. This is the main monster in the game. It walks around, it chases you, it freaks the hell out of you. It's very fast, very dangerous. You can't fight it. You, it just basically rapes you. So let's talk about the drawing instead. This is quite a special drawing because I took my time with it. I really took my time with it. Um, I was pretty disappointed after my last one, which is Sarah Kerrigan. I thought it would turn out much better than it did. And I was... You know, when you look at something for too long, you don't see its flaws anymore. And after taking a couple of days break from drawing and looking at it again, sure, I can spot a lot of flaws. Now, I'm not going to say that everyone that commented is right. I mean, some people are being picky and they are being divas, so whatever. But still, I wasn't fully uh, happy with how the drawing came out. I, it didn't come out as good as I wanted it to. So that's why I decided to spread my drawing out over a few days, probably two. So 
I worked for uh, about four hours on this one yesterday, and I finished it today. It took about six hours in total. And one cool thing that I discovered is that I can watch series while drawing, so that makes the experience much more enjoyable than just sitting there and staring at the paper non-stop and listening to music, because that gets a very much tiring after a couple of hours. So right now I'm just watching series and uh, drawing at the same time, so I have a lot to watch, therefore it's, uh, it's a good uh, opportunity to get two things done at the same time, and it makes time fly faster than just sitting there. So, I'm going to try to focus more on quality over quantity, because so far I've been releasing a video, like a drawing video, every three days, and sometimes it's just not enough to, to find a proper character to draw and get the inspiration, get the motivation. It's just not. So, I'm going to space them out a bit more, probably, because, you know... <laughs> Three days, I think it's it's a bit short because it's that whole expectancy issue. When when you know that the day is coming, when you have to sit there for four hours and draw something, and then you have to sit there for another two, three hours and encode it, and that's basically one day gone for one video. Well, if I do this, work for a couple of hours, two, three hours every day on something, I, I can get it done faster and there's no stress involved. So I think it's a much better way to to put out a, a higher quality finished product. So I'm going to do that from now on. Plus there are a lot of games coming out and I'm going to buy a lot of them and play a lot of them. So there will be a lot of gameplay videos to fill the space. So content will not be scarce. It will, sure, drawings will not come out as often as they used to, but they will still come out. That's what the channel is for mainly. But I'll also make a lot of gameplay videos to to have fun and like check out different games and, and just mess around. So don't fret, boys. There will still be stuff for you to watch. Now, I did this drawing entirely in graphite because I want to start focusing more on uh, detail work. Also, I've changed my technique a bit. I'm going to try at least to stop using lines because so far I've been using very heavy lines to basically outline everything. And that's a more cartoonish way of drawing things. I want to start focusing more on realism. And as you well know, in realism, there are no lines. People don't have lines. So I tried to do my best in this drawing and use more tonal change rather than lines to define contours. And it worked out pretty well. The only lines that I actually used in the drawing were um, around the belts that are surrounding his body and the bandages that are on his hand. So that's about it. The rest was pretty much tonal change and gradients. So it worked out pretty well. I'm still sort of new to this way of drawing because so far I've only been using uh, like line weights to define elements. But it's a much better way of drawing. Like all the pros that really approach realism with a, a serious goal, they, they use tonal changes and it's much better. Um, one thing that hinders me is the paper that I'm using, which is, is not quite perfect for very heavy detail work because it's very textured. But it's not textured like your normal drawing paper or watercolor paper. What watercolor paper? It's uh, it has a very special like canvasy texture sort of. So I would like to get my hands on some uh, Bristol Extra Smooth. I've seen people work on those uh, types of papers, and it's it's really really nice. What kind of effects you can get on it? Like the graphite sticks to it, and you can get a very deep rich black. So. Maybe at some point I'll purchase some and mess around with it, but for now I'm stuck with this one. I still have an entire notebook, like enough for about 150 or something drawing. So this one is going to last me for quite a while. But uh, what else? In case you haven't noticed, I have gotten partnered and I am now part of TGS officially. So um, I mentioned I would be in a previous video and it hadn't happened yet. But yesterday I received the invitation to to join TGS like officially and become partnered. So that's what all the buttons are about. The, all the buttons that you see on my channel now, they're a consequence of me getting partnered. So I want to thank everyone for that again. And uh, hopefully we'll, uh, it'll get only better from now on. But thank you for watching and I hope you enjoyed the drawing. Please uh, like it and uh, add it to favorites if you enjoyed it. And I'll see you for my next one. Bye bye.